let me hear. So we start. Uh, welcome everybody. We may start. We have the pleasure today to have with us uh, Dr. Kanak Saha. He is uh, from the Inter-University Center for Astronomy and Astrophysics at the Pune University in India. Uh, Kanak's primary uh, research uh, interest is in uh, galaxy formation and galactic dynamics, uh, where he worked uh, for uh, uh, already for many years in this field. Let me tell you a few things. He got uh, his uh, PhD in 2008 from the Institute, uh, Indian Institute of Science in Balga Bangalore, India. And then uh, there was a series of uh, uh, postdoctoral positions in uh, the uh, science, uh, at the, uh, uh, science uh, Institute in Baltimore, then uh, in Taipei, then in Munich at the Max Planck Institute for uh, Extraterrestrial Physics, then at the Geneva Observatory, and then uh, he went to the institute where he works uh, today at the Inter-University Center for Astronomy and Astrophysics in India. Uh, you already see the title uh, on your screen, Growth and Survival of Bars in Disk Galaxies, which is uh, a subject uh, that uh, is very interesting uh, for many of us uh, here in our institute, and uh, we may start. Do you want to have also the, a picture of the speaker on the screen? Yes, let me do that again. Okay, great. Let me do this arrangement here, like this. Okay, Kanak, you may start. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Panos, for inviting me to this uh, uh, seminar. Um, uh, I had a, a, a good opportunity to uh, meet uh, Panos uh, in, in, while I was in MPE. We used to meet for lunch sometimes and uh, a lot of uh, chit chat during that time. So I enjoyed talking to him and since that time. Um, so um, today I think I'm going to talk about uh, growth and uh, survival of bars in these galaxies is a uh, title it's pretty uh, general uh, i mean if we understand both we understand like you now all of it what's uh, related to the bars in in in, in galaxies uh, before i get into the subjects here is a picture of our institute uh, this is the internal uh, premises uh, where you could see maybe there's a statue of Galileo um, uh, and, uh, uh, and there's a nice seating arrangements like uh, people's chit chat with the uh, tea time or coffee time. Um, uh, so this, uh, the, this institute in short, we call it IUCA, IUCA. And this is one of the uh, premier institution in the India for, for uh, doing astronomy and astrophysics research. Um, so let me get into uh, this. Uh, uh, so I have written a few uh, scattered uh, um, topics for the, for the talk. But I think um, they, are, they may not be in order, but I'll generally try to discuss about uh, with the bar hosting galaxies and what's the bar evolution, what are the survival issues for bar. And uh, mostly, I think I will like try to um, um, show you the results or the work that we've been doing um, over the last like uh, um, uh, several years. So uh, as you know, uh, this is a pretty picture of the Milky Way uh, is an artistic impression. And uh, uh, this is, you must have seen like you know, a thousand times. And uh, Milky Way is a, uh, is a very good example of the barred galaxy. And you host us uh, a bar at the center. And uh, we are about 8.5 kiloparsec from the center of the, the Milky Way and so on. 
And this picture of the Milky Way was not the, what we see today, it was not like this. It's, uh, it's, it's a lot of effort has been gone into uh, uh, constructing this, this, this picture, real, realistic picture of the Milky Way. As you can see, there's a uh, map of the first map of the Milky Way, which is nearly a sun centric by William Herschel, 1785. So Milky Way is not a, uh, the exceptional, but uh, there are more than two thirds of the, uh, these galaxies in the local universe are of Milky Way type, which means the host bar. Um, now the, the central uh, question is that the, the, how do certain galaxies grow a bar? Uh, that's the kind of question that we want to understand. And that's the uh, question that almost like, you know, everybody who is interested in, in these galaxies might have come across once in a time, like you now this, this question, you know, how do certain galaxies grow a bar? Like, you know, what is it that, uh, uh, so the complementary question would be like, you know, how do certain galaxies avoid growing bar? Right. So if we, if we do this, so that's, that's kind of, if we answer this, we kind of understand um, sort of the, the, the two um, arms of the Hubble tuning fog diagram, like, you know, which is a barred and unbarred, right? And, uh, and uh, if we know how to answer the first question, then we would also can like you now go back in time and uh, can probably understand uh, that when did the first Hubble sequence formed, and uh, and uh, so that's the that's the key that we would like to understand in terms of like the evolution. Uh, so this requires a lot of understanding both from the uh, the observational side and also from the uh, from the, the the theory and the simulation side. So this is a this this requires a like you know working tandem. Now, if you if you look at the typical um, uh, redshift one, two, redshift two galaxy, they are mostly like clumpy, and uh, uh, so there is a there is a huge the 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 part of the of the galaxy's life being spent from this redshift one to two to redshift zero. It's almost like a ten billion years. Uh, plus, um, as you can see, that those are the galaxies which are like clumpy. They are the population, like dominant population, as you know, the star formation history sort of peaked around this time, and uh, since then those galaxies probably evolved and formed the today's galaxies. The big question is, what are the how how did this happen? So uh, we want to understand that, like. It's, it's not an easy task, right? Because we cannot just, um, so the observationally one could do like, you know, make a redshift slice and try to understand, but then we already know the input from the cosmological simulations and whereby we know that there are several ingredients, the physical processes that have contributed to the growth of this galaxy or the assembly of the galaxy from this clumpy phase to today, like to name this are the, some of the gas accretion, uh, minor mergers, like the in-situ star formation versus the ex-situ, then the galaxy interaction. And as it like now towards the, uh, the, uh, the more local universe, the secular evolution part probably also played a role. The interesting thing that is, uh, um, I should mention here is that redshift one and between one to two, it's not only the, um, not only the, the galaxies that clumpy, which is revealed by the very high resolution uh, HST images, but uh, we could also now, we, we also now have uh, pretty good results from the, um, the IAFU surveys and um, one and two, redshift one and two is also considered sort of a galaxy settling time, like sort of uh, you want us to understand the, the how do galaxies evolve and you want to understand, if you want to understand the dynamics. So that's the kind of a redshift to start with in, in by understanding because that's when it's sort of kinematic settling time of, of, of the galaxies. And since then one can think about um, about how to evolve, like right, dynamically. 
Now, uh, coming to the context of the bar, the bars has been like seen in the Havulji field, the north and south both. And this is one of the earlier uh, images in which the this image is from the Abraham metal, and it has been uh, uh, arranged in, in ascending order of redshift. You can see from 0.2 to 0.5, all the way up to like you know, uh, redshift one. And uh, uh, those time it was like measured uh, um, just by uh, measuring the B by A of the bar. And uh, when the B by A of the bar square is less than 0.5, not considered as a bar, but it's an above like that's the, so, sorry, if it is less than that is the bar and the otherwise it's not. But it has already been like uh, from this, where well, you can already understand that the bar existed even at redshift one. And now a much more cleaner way of like looking at from the observations and you can see that is also like going up to a redshift one and there's a clear and much more high resolution images available for the for the uh, the bar, uh, you know, the, the, the existence of the bar at even higher redshift. Uh, going to the, uh, before I go to the um, sort of uh, more into the, uh, bar uh, understanding there's a very interesting thing that came out in recently is called the offset bar uh, normally we understand the bar to be at the center of the galaxy like in the milky way but there is a there is a, uh, a growing number of um, um, galaxies sample um, which which states that that the bar is kind of off centered which is not at the center of the uh, galaxy. And um, this is a nice work from Sander Prook in 2017. And it seems that when you when you plot those galaxies having offset bar and on a star formation rate versus a stellar mass plot, which shows a typical uh, bimodality, and it seems the, the offset bar hosting galaxies are actually the low mass star forming galaxies. And one of the famous example is in our uh, uh, local dwarf galaxy is the Large Magellanic Cloud, also host uh, uh, um, a sort of offset bar. So it's a very, very interesting and it's kind of, you know, if you want to understand the, like, you know, the dynamics, like, you know, uh, the, the, the rotation and how everything like happens, it's kind of, uh, it's it's uh, it's a good amount of time needed for for understanding uh, 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 the offset bar case. Um, uh, very very quickly, uh, I will I go through the what kind of galaxies uh, the host the bar. Now, of course, like in these galaxies, we have spiral and lenticulars, so there is no surprise. And uh, all we have is the stellar mass of the galaxy, which is we, which we can measure. Uh, uh, and the bulk to total ratio, which is hosted by the center of these galaxies. And uh, I picked up one uh, uh, simple example of a coma cluster in which you can see that the diamonds are the bar hosting, like a strong bar hosting. So it's clear that uh, the bar hosting galaxies are sort of uh, luminous galaxies, or in other words, the more massive galaxies. Okay, and and uh, recently it has been shown based on the SGSS data is that like it seems that uh, the strong bars in uh, are are more prevalent in the early types and the weak bars in the late types, but I think uh, we it requires a bit more, uh, I think, um, time to settle it down. And uh, well, uh, now it's been growing that like, it is the massive galaxies which are hosting uh, strong bars. And uh, you can see that in a strong bar case, the stellar mass range from 10 to the power 9.5, 9 10 to the 9.5 to 10 to the 11. And if you include the weak bars, so they are uh, basically, uh, so weak bar is kind of a, uh, it's a, it's a, it's a um, the measurement of them are not always very, very precise. So I think we should, uh, uh, we should uh, consider mostly the strong bar cases first. 
And uh, the coming to the bulk to total ratio, the bulk to total ratio, it seems like you no know, original. Uh, originally, we used to have an idea is that general idea is the lenticular galaxies or the S zero galaxies are having the most massive bulges, but that's not quite true. Like you no know, lenticular galaxies are also having a lot of low mass bulges, like you know, several studies have shown already. So it's not very clear like you know, whether the bulge to total ratio does play a role in hosting a bar but um but our our uh, uh, when i'm talking about the bulges i'm talking about the classical bulges and we already know that uh, there is a hint of small classical bulge in the milky way and there are other uh, galaxies also for example just to give an example in this 3945 it has also it's it hosts a bar but it has a small classical bulge we looked at that from the lenticular galaxy point of view and we can we have we have from our sample of about 195 local lenticular galaxies observed using the spitzer space telescope we see that <coughs> There is a tendency of the low mass um, uh, bulges uh, are to be the the host of the bars in lenticular galaxy, and uh, we can we can see from here is also that the the the, the bulges that are hosted by the lenticular galaxy there's low mass classical bulge, but those are the cases are actually barred. So unbarred uh, lenticular galaxy seem to be like you no know, hosting a larger classical bulge. This was published in Eminem later. Um, so uh, coming back to the so so, so in general, like now, I don't think we have a very good consensus on the on the on the so spiral galaxy, given the fact that we are. Uh, I think we need to be uh, pretty sure about the weak bar cases uh, to be counted properly in a, in, a, in, a, in a much more robust way. So uh, this is uh, also the issue when it comes to the like, you know, understanding the bar evolution, you know, which is the redshift evolution. You can see on the upper axis, uh, x-axis, it's being redshift zero, where is the, the, the large fraction of the, of the bar galaxy hosted in the local universe. And the, the green like shaded region show that, um, shows that that that's the sim prediction by the simulation cosmological hydrodynamical simulation and there is a i think is a quite a bit of a tension still there it's not very clear that uh, that uh, several observations have shown um, for example if you look at uh, uh, um, alma green here you can see bar fraction more or less remain flat up till redshift about one and uh, some uh, have suggested that maybe uh, that there is a the, the declining bar fraction so it's in the early galaxy did not have bar so and and this has been like looked at also in the in the simulation point of view for example from the tng uh, simulation you can but in the tng simulations like you know, shows very quite a uh, surprising or maybe an amazing result is that uh, that uh, that that the massive galaxies seem to form bar even at redshift four. So, uh, so those are the like the upper the uh, you can you can see the diamond, which is a uh, the the rose the, the diamond, which is having more massive galaxy, and they seem to be having a bar, and that bar fraction don't seem to change a lot. So, so that's the. Uh, that's the current like nothing that we know from the from the simulation side. So it looks like that uh, the bar is a very very um, robust. Looks like robust if the, the the fraction is remaining constant, then it's it's it, it it could be a robust or there is a possibility of the regeneration. So so which is which we need to understand. So there are several uh, mechanism or the formation growth of bars in galaxies. So of which like you, know, you would like know these are very the classic, the swimming up, swing amplification of the gravitationally unstable like M equals to two mode in a cold stellar disk. So there are like tons of work on this thing. And then uh, if you have uh, galaxy galaxy interaction or merger, 
seem to we will see that because we have some results from the merger case also we will show that uh, they also seem to like sort of excite uh, um, the bars in the galaxies there's also another very interesting mechanism which i don't think has been tested a lot uh, with the cooperation of the orbital streams which is a, 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 a classic paper by arn and linden bell 1996 which is showing the slowly trapping of the like now the bar orbits and like sort of grow bar in in that for that they have certain kind of the potential which is uh, a galactic potential which is uh, which is uh, helping in 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 trapping the this um uh, the then there is also been like uh, the other avenues been also um sort of uh, uh, explode and the interaction with the with the with the substructures in the dark matter halo and then uh, resonant interaction with the with the dark matter particles which has been like you now since uh, 2002 uh, the the classic work by uh, lia danasula and, and then subsequent work uh, has been sh has shown that the dark matter particles which are actually uh, live and uh, they actually carry angular momentum from the center part of the uh, of the of the of the disk and uh, the sort of leads to the growth of the bar and uh, we also had the work to add here which i did uh, with uh, tosten nav is an accelerated growth to this uh, using if you have a dark matter halo in, instead of the static dark matter particles the dark matter halo also sort of spinning to it so there's like there is a there is a like lot to like uh, sort of if you, if you look at this list of like a you know, possible uh, bar formation mechanism and bar growing mechanism so suddenly we, it's not under, it's not easy if you look at a galaxy in the sky and tell like you now well, how did the bar grow here so it's not very easy one needs to like so what we re, what is required is to basically uh, there should be a drive to understand uh, you know, various mechanisms if they give rise to bar. Is there a unique signature to it? So that's what is probably I'm, I'm missing, but I think I, that's, that's what's important. So while there is a, uh, um, a lot of mechanisms for the growing of bar, there are also sort of survival issues. Like, for example, this has been like you know, it's been shown for more than I think uh, 30 years or so that the central mass concentration can like you now sort of go uh, uh, sort of destroy a bar uh, or the supermassive black hole um, marchers and could be also inspiring clumps. Now uh, many of these thing uh, has been like sort of shown that that if you want to destroy a bar really in a galaxy you need a quite uh, a massive sort of central mass concentration whose mass it seems to be like you no know, at least um, close to about few percent or more uh, of the host galaxy stellar mass so that's like a lot, I think. I think so. In 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 other words, it has been shown that 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 the it's not very easy to to destroy a bar once it is there in the in the, in the galaxy. And I think uh, uh, the the uh, people from your group, particularly like you know, the panels, and have you no know, know that uh, that it's not so easy to like you know the the destroy a bar once it hasn't. Uh, like uh, a very um, stable orbital structures in that. Um, so a simple um, uh, description of a bar, I think uh, I just uh, uh, sort of trying to like, you know, I, guess, uh, I, I understand that like now many of you are uh, already very familiar with all this, but it's uh, just a, uh, for those who are not. So bar is a rotating triaxial stellar system. And if you look at it from a potential point of view, it's a you know, basic uh, in the background disk potential, which can be like phi naught is an axisymmetric disk potential. You can add a bar component to a spiral and you can add like you know, all kinds of uh, non-axisymmetric 
or extra uh, external potential to it to understand that this is the total galaxy potential, which is actually uh, can be like you no know, non-axis symmetric. Uh, the bar can be also uh, thought about the bar potential as a like uh, uniformly rotating potential, which means it has the it has a um, uh, simplest uh, time dependence, which is a, in terms of a rotation, uniform rotation. Uh, as we know from the simulation is that the bar can be also like you know, growing to a large part and it could be also like you know, from an observational point of view, which we do not know yet. Uh, but, uh, but from the simulation size, as you know, like you know, there is a considerable part of the bar uh, life, which is in the growing phase and which the, 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 this, uh, the amplitude of the bar sort of growing, which can like sort of destroy this like simplest time time dependence and it make a very very general time dependent problem and which makes it like sort of um, a very complex uh, problem to deal with and now uh, there's also um, uh, i will probably not have time that whether the question is like you know, whether the bar uh, rotates at a rigid pattern right so has it been tested so so we we try to do look at this in the simulation recently and and uh, has uh, some exciting results in that now if you have a bar with a um, uh, sort of fixed uh, uh, rotating potential or is a uh, fixed pattern speed then it has uh, the five lagrangian points which are kind of important so l1 and l2 are to the end of the bar and l4 and are along the minor axis of the bar and uh, because of the, the rotating pattern, it also has uh, characteristic inner Lindblad, so Lindblad resonances like the ILR and the corotation and the blood. This resonance locations, particularly the corotation, divides the bar into two dynamically distinct region. And uh, so, so one, can, one can think about the inside the corotation and outside the corotation. So, so I'll not get into like you know, these because I think uh, I deliberately sort of will avoid this part because I think I want to learn more from Panos and uh, and uh, so basically that the, the bar has a the two uh, uh, periodic orbits x1 and x2 family and which are kind of like you no know, sort of backbone of the bar and uh, when we talk about the destruction of the bar is probably this x1 orbits are which we are probably targeting and i think uh, <clears throat> there is a uh, like very like uh, the the reach of work from 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 your group here so so i not get there now um in, in, in when you talk about in a simulations or in a analytically how do we know uh, that like you know, how does the bar grow so that's the that's the kind of thing that we want to know so it's a, if you think about the, the typical uh, galaxy which hosts uh, like central bulge, like sort of spherical bulge to be simplistic, and the dark matter halo, which is uh, the light, both the bulge and the dark matter light. And in, in, in a typical, uh, um, uh, if you don't want to bring a lot of complexity, then one can think about that the distribution function of the particles or the stars that make up the bulge, spherical bulge or the dark matter halo can be described by a function of the, uh, the energy integral. And if you have that, one can show that the rate of change of angular momentum is proportional to the, the, uh, the pattern speed and the strength of the bar, which is written as an uh, LMN, which is the spherical harmonics component of the, of the bar potential, and is inversely proportional to the, the sort of bulge, the, the velocity dispersion, which means if you have a hotter, uh, if a bulge with the hotter stars, uh, then they would not uh, take away angular momentum much. But the dark matter halo particles, on the other hand, can like you know, do, but it's still like, you know, valid for, for both. Like this is a very general um, sort of analytic understanding. And we, we, we've seen that in, in, uh, from simulations of the Dubinsky and previous also in the Atanasula, but this is clearly showing that, that there is a, um, uh, if you look at the eta, which is the um, eta equals to zero is the corotation. So one can see that the, at the corotation, uh, there's a lot 
lot of like an angular momentum uh, flow along the along the corrotation. So resonant interaction does play a, a very very significant role in 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 taking away angular momentum from the from the cent central region of the galaxy. One once a seed bar forms, of course, and then once the seed bar would try to like non grow, okay, through this uh, angular momentum like non dissipation or in some sense draining out the angular momentum from the from the bar region. Now these simulations, depending on the uh, the, the number of particles in the simulation, because this is not not the all that is there in the formula, but this is a very complex. So it seems like it's not only just a resonant particle, but the off resonant particle also seems to like you know, contribute to the to the uh, angular momentum uh, draining to the to the to the uh, dark matter halo or or the or the central bulge. Okay, so the resonant interaction is a very important aspect when you talk about the growth of bars uh, in, in this galaxy. So in spot, I will try to like you now uh, uh, show you some interesting results from our simulation and recent work. So our simulations, the way I construct the simulation is following uh, Quicken and uh, Dubinsky, uh, which is uh, the um, making galaxy models based on self-consistent galaxy model based on uh, uh, distribution function approach. And in that we model the bulge with the King model and the dark matter halo with the lower Evans model. And the stellar disk is an exponentially truncated disk, smoothly truncation is there. Uh, uh, and we iteratively like you know, solve this, this set of equation through the Poisson equation and, and make uh, the galaxy models. Uh, so so uh, uh, it's not very straightforward because, um, because the, the parameters of the simulation, so the distribution functions, there's no one-to-one -one correspondence to what can you measure. For example, can I increase easily the stellar mass? Can I increase the velocity dispersion of the stars or the size. So it's, it's not very easily, uh, this is not very easy to handle, but as with some practice like it's possible. So I, I make a very, very simple thing to start with. This is because every, uh, this is classic and everyone is familiar with it. This is a smooth disk and at the tumbler queue around 1.8. And you can see if you run that and it forms a, um, uh, very quickly a bar and uh, it has a fixed like in a pattern speed as this pattern speed decreases as the bar grow so it's a very standard results that we that we, that you know now um, yeah, such setup I did about 100 around I think 90 simulation around 2010 and uh, the this histogram, uh, sort of no, so not sorry histogram so this this plot on the lower left showing a, a sort of parameter space that i have explored in which case the initial model was tumbre q at 2.5 scale length the halo mass to disk mass ratio and uh, the velocity ellipsoid also so a subset of this galaxy uh, when i when you run this typical way in the using the gadget uh, simulation uh, ones that are like you no know, very massive and uh, so not massive like you no know, having a dark matter halo mass which is on on a more than 10 ish so it's just a very massive dark matter halo and uh, as a hot disk they don't seem to form a bar very easily, which is probably understood from the old times. So they do form what is will look like over a long time in you know, weak bars. And um, I did not go after the publication of these things, so, but this is in the archives of the content. Uh, more recently, what we did is uh, I made simulations, suit of simulation about 10 plus, and in which I make the disk intentionally with tumor Q less than one. So that lead to the, so if you have a tumor Q uh, with less than one, we know that uh, from simple analytic understanding is that it will go through uh, violent disk instability and the disk sort of fragments into stellar clumps. And these stellar clumps later on sort of uh, in spiral, 
and you can see at the end that that uh, at t equals to zero the upper plane which is a smooth disk t is 20 on the on the right side and the uh, lower left panel you can see that there is a there is a there seems to be a bar at the center like sort of a growth you can see the the Fourier harmonics which is uh, I try to um, I cannot like so there are there are three curves here the first one is at t equals to 20 so which is sort of like sort of probing the sort of clumpy structure and uh, then at t equals to 50 you see see like an a2 over a0 is little higher than 0.2 and at t equals to 200 which is about few giga years here and there the the bar sort of decrease like the bar stand decreases and you can see here what is happening is that this stellar clumps because of the dynamical frictions they sort of move in and sort of pump into the to the the central part of the of the bar and they seem to somehow weaken the sort of the bar which you can see clearly so if you had like so so this gives us a very very um, a sort of cleaner way of understanding the impact of the stellar clumps that would have would have probably in the high redshift universe if there is a there is a bar and and uh, as you can see like now th this is this is sort of this this in spiraling clump sort of trying to destroy or weaken the bar very quickly and here is a like four simulations which were published in 2018 abjulators you can see that as the 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 this this the fragmented disk sort of evolves and uh, it's the tumor Q rises very high okay so it's it's the heat of the disk is quite a bit and and only the one that is like initial models are I, I forgot to say the initial models are all identical so there is no except the tumor Q parameter at at 2.5 scale length so from hotter to like no cold if you can see around uh, q equals to one the disk don't fragment and it's like form a ice bar and you can see like as you go from from right to the left side here you can see that uh, the cold disk and uh, which fragments like you no know, very violently they are not the one which is growing bar at the end so then with this, we have uh, tried to uh, make uh, a few more set of simulations in a more controlled fashion in which we uh, made simulation with two different kinds of bulge. One is a compact bulge, one is a more diffuse bulge. Okay, and if you can see, sorry. Uh, so this is uh, the omega minus kappa by two as a function of radius. On the on the left side, and uh, the one that is the compact bulge, you can see omega minus kappa by two has a very very uh, strong peak. So and there is a variation to this, and you can see here at a glance we show uh, on the on the on the left side is a one kind of model which is the A type A series, okay type A bulge on the left side, and on the right side is the type B. You can see clearly that uh, that the models which are having the compact, very compact bulge, they don't seem to form bar at the end, which is like A1. And it's like here, it's a B, um, B2, B3, you can see. So what we did is we try to understand this a bit more in a general fashion, because this is what being plotted. On the y-axis, you see the, the row bulge over the row disk. So we take the, the, the the density of the bulge within a given radius and in the same radius you calculate the volume density of the disk stars and take the ratio of them so it will give you like you know how uh, the the bulge the stars are are, are compared with the disk stars and the versus the tumor q the one the round one are for the for the 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 type a which is less compact more diffuse bulge and you can see that the more diffuse bars like you now have also like you no know, low ILR strength and they do form bar and once that is a very strong ILR uh, in our little resonance and they don't grow bar at the end and this we try to understand from a very very general principle 
using the, the tensor virial theorem and, and uh, constructing our striker pupils criteria, which says that the, the ratio of the total rotational kinetic energy divided by the potential energy, which is in the denominator, if it's greater than 0.4, it's like you know, going bar unstable, or we using simple like you know, virial uh, theorem, we, we convert this into the ratio of the random kinetic energy versus the rotational kinetic energy. If it's less than 5.14, then it's like sort of doesn't go bar unstable. And um, sort of we try to understand like you know, from a two model that what's actually happening in this, this two model. Just I'll show you these two images here. You can see that in one case, there's a smooth evolution, which is uh, uh, one of the model in this same series. And in the other case, which is A1, this is exactly here, the A5 and the A1 on the top and the bottom on the A series on the left side. And this is what I'm showing into in detail. And when you see it in A1, this is the compact bulge. And it sort of the form is spiral um, and which kind of fragmented. And there seems to be, uh, again, an imp imp and the in spiraling like you know, the clumps that like you know, got out of the fragmented the spiral arms. And at the end, you don't seem to grow a bar, a clean no bar case. And we try to understand this from this point of view that, uh, that, that first of all, that has a very compact bulge. And the other thing is that uh, the, the, the rate at which the angular momentum has been drained from the, from the, from the system. So it seems like uh, the, if, if you see the two curves here, the, the red dots are for the A1 and then the so square are for the A5. I, I don't know if you, you will not, A5 which form a bar and A1 which don't form a bar. So A1 is a red dot, A5 is a square, okay, the open square. You can see that uh, that in one case, the rate of heating at the center because of the because of the um, uh, the, the spiraling clumps is much more um, um, uh, sharp uh, or or very sharply rising heating, uh, and at the same time the angular momentum rate at which like you know, it's it's uh, angular momentum is like drained out is also like different. So these two factors seem to matter. Uh, 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 in in these kind of simulations, which are which are sort of growing bar or not growing bar. bar. Now this has been uh, also tested on, and then uh, we did, we looked at the experiment using Galmar uh, simulations, which we, we studied using uh, minor mergers and, uh, done by my postdoc like you know, Somabogos. And uh, in this case, you can see also that uh, 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 this is a merger between a giant spiral, which is initially there is a bar. And this initially bar, but then it's like you know, merging with a, a dwarf galaxy, which is initially at 100 kpc. And so it comes and like sort of merges the, so this is a typical minor merger example. At t equals to zero, we have a bar. But as you go like uh, t equals to like you know, sort of end of the simulations when actually the the the, the dwarf merged, we have uh, actually the bar strength reduced, and you can see that at the end the 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 bar strength or the a two parameter like you know, sort of going down smoothly. So so this is uh, another example in which a uh, like in spiraling in in this case like you know, even more the 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 the. the the a dwarf galaxy, like you know, which is march at the center and form a bar. Now you can you can you can see that one one thing is that like during the pericenter passages, there is actually a rise in the in the bar strength, which means that holds true because that's what you say is a tidally induced bar or the bar grows during the interaction, which is true. But then let it like you know, march, and you can see in, we we studied about many different kinds of orbits. The prograde and the retrograde config configuration in all cases, like you know, there seems to be like a you know, smooth uh, declining of the bar strength, except the pericenter passages, which is uh, leads to the strength of the bar. So we looked at in a bit more detail into this. You know what's happening here? You can see like you know, on the on the background you know, there is a there is a galaxy, and the, and the cyan color particles are the the 
the satellite particles that enter the bar radius. Okay, so which means we looked at actually the total mass uh, that gets accreted from the satellite to the center, and it seems that at the end of this, when the when the so when the satellite march finally, sort of there is a diffuse uh, the particle get diffused, but there is certain fraction end up within the within the bar region, and we see that the net. Uh, change is about few percent of the disk mass and it's naturally occurs. We don't need to do anything. But uh, what is happening here is that, uh, remember when I talked about the survival of the BART, the CMC in previous simulations, they also needed about few percent of the disk mass. But then since they grew this adiabatically, so it's like you know, over a longer period of time, so it's slowly, so they have, a BAR probably did adjust. In this case of a minor mergers, everything happening in a very short period of time, so it's not adiabatic at all. And that's exactly the case that I was talking about in a previous simulation, in a more, when the clumps actually merge. So this process is not adiabatic in a very short time. So maybe the adjustment is not possible for the orbital adjustment. Now, so, so in our case here, we can see like you now the delta T, this is about 100 to 200 mega year only. So it's a very short time for uh, accumulating this mass mass. Now, this is also uh, been like sort of understood from a typical like you know, merger pairs that we've been like uh, selecting from simulations and there's a input and which is which is a very useful thing that that uh, that uh, the over what time scale if the merger happens and what's going to be like you know, the impact on that. So we can we can sort of understand this. Now we also did a uh, interesting thing again for, as with the mass accumulation, we also did the angular momentum change, like in a specific angular momentum change. The, the dashed uh, black curve is for if there was no minor merger, just the host galaxy. So as you know that it's sort of uh, the, the angular momentum like you know, sort of decreases over time, right? So, so that's the normal. But then when there is a merger, you can see that, uh, that there, is a, there is an announcement in the, in the, in the first case that the, 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 the angular momentum loss is reduced. Is there, there is angular momentum loss, but then the angular momentum loss is reduced in a, in a, in a, in a in the progress simulation, which I just showed the picture. So this kind of like in uh, sort of <coughs> anti-bar growth in, in some sense. Okay. So with this, we also um, did uh, a few um, uh, simulations in which we found an interesting thing is that when this minor merger happens, can we say something more into like uh, the inside information, like if there is a separation between the disk and the dark matter halo, so if there is an offset, right? So we calculated the center of mass of the dark matter halo particles. And the, and the stellar disk particles. And you can see that it, during the pericenter process, there seems to be sort of change that there is a spike in the, in the, in the, in the dark matter halo and uh, the stellar disk separation. So we put that into a model and we sort of uh, artificially um, um, uh, shift the center, basically make an off-center model. And you can see the initially strong bar is reduced at the, at the end, which is like in about in a, in, a, in a time scale. We also did something more um, sort of adiabatically. What in what we did is basically we we changed the give a little push to the dark matter halo uh, the the particle velocity. Okay, and uh, so over time we thought like they will drift apart. Right, it's a very artificial, but what you see is very interesting. And in, in, uh, initially, this is a this is a barred galaxy which is at the at the center and uh, which is the left side of the image. And you can see that over time it creates a very lopsided structure, and uh, the the bar seems to be sort of uh, uh, there is a there is a decline in the bar strength, 
and as well as as well as seems to be offset and this is what i try to compare with the with the uh, with the real image with the ugc 7239 from sdss r band and you can see here there is a uh, this is at the moment it's uh, I, I did not publish but i think that's the that's the that's the case we see like sort of this kind of offset is possible there and you can see here uh, there's a bar and the the, the initial bulge there seems to be like you no know, who mm, the separation is there's a center of the bar and the center of the the bulge which was at the, at the end so there is a um, so it it's sort of at the end um, there's a compromise here so like you now who is at the center so um, with this, I think I am close to the end of my talk. I, I don't think I will uh, go into the more detail, but I wanted to show here um, uh, and and uh, and uh, case of a um, uh, bar which is an observation and uh, which is been a, a recent discovery, um, uh, relatively recent. The Melin one the galaxy which is a giant low surface brightness galaxy at the 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 uh, 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 from the from the cfst and uh, which in the in the in the hst 814w which is an i band it shows a, a, a bar at the bar center so it's a melin one seems to be a, a galaxy with the with the lenticular like morphology at the center and outer part has a like spiral arm so it looks like a very hybrid galaxy or i don't know galaxy could be in transition when you looked at this galaxy in our using our astrosat filter astrosat data you can see in astrosat f 154w means the far ultraviolet emission you can see that the far ultraviolet emission this is the the image in the far ultraviolet and you can see that the there is a misaligned the the emission from the far, from the far uv uh, in the in the far uv and and uh, it seems to be um, and it's is within the bar region within the bar region as 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 like the contours are from the hst contours so this is uh, this is also been like you no know, one of the uh, uh, one of the aspect of that uh, uh, people have been looking for is that um, the blue bars or the or the or the bar um, have any young stellar component in it, and it seems that this is one of the first time we are showing uh, a, a, a bluer component in the in the in the bar. So it's a very 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 massive. Sorry, the young and and uh, sort of um, hot stars, which is represent the far UV emission, and uh, there is a there is a lot to probably understand from 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 as, as you like you know, move on. Like what I was thinking is that like you know, there are seems to be like you know, FUV in terms always in clumpy, and whether there are more clumps to come in. So as we like you know, improve this image even to even higher signal to noise, we should have a very good and a, uh, a picture to like you know, be revealed like you now what is the what is the uh, what what is happening in the in the in the in the uh, bar when it when it comes to like uh, uh, the young stellar component in it um so with this i think i'm almost like you know, at the end of my talk and then i think i'll stop here uh, i did not want to go into the, the boxy balls part for maybe minutes time. Thank you. Thank you. So thank you very much, uh, Kanak, for, the, for this very, very interesting talk, very informative, uh, and reviewing things. Uh, uh, it was very, very useful for all of us here in the audience and those that uh, are linked. Uh, there is a time for questions. Is there anyone from the audience here that has to ask something? I, I, I want to just to, uh, well, there's a question, maybe uh, an issue for discussion. Now, 
listening to all that you have presented, uh, one uh, thing that uh, came to my mind is how realistic is when we start uh, uh, modeling isolated disks uniformly populated and then giving some any kind of uh, velocity distribution there. So uh, we find bars. So, uh, but is this a realistic initial condition set up? This is what, <laughs> what uh, makes me think, or what do you think about that? Yes, I, I agree. Um, um, this is not realistic at all. So what we did it for, I did it for fun. So, so uh, because I also did not publish it yet. Um, so we, we saw that uh, uh, initially we did this simulation to give uh, this unrealistic uh, uh, way of like uh, uh, adding velocities to the, the dark matter particles. But what we saw is that this one, we saw it in simulation, in, in uh, minor merger simulation. This plot, it comes from the, the Galmar simulation, which, which simulates uh, 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 minor merger of a giant and the dwarf galaxy. So there we looked at that. So obvious thing you would see that, okay, so if there is a, um, the offset between the dark matter halo and the uh, stellar disk, could it be due to the intera interaction, right? So it's can be tidal interest. So this is what we are showing here, that if we, if we look at those minor merger simulation from the Galmar, and you see there are spikes in the, in the, during the pericenter passages, and uh, there, is a, um, there is a separation which is measurable. So that's the, so using that sort of as a guide, and we try to like, you know, do, um, sort of experiment. So that's, I, I agree that this is not realistic, but. Yeah, yeah. Okay, but uh, looking at the snapshot that you show us there, uh, this particular offset would cause this uh, uh, lopsided, uh, let's say morphology of uh, the objects uh, that uh, would appear in the sky. We do have such examples, but I don't think that they, do, do you think that these are that uh, common? Uh, in some cases, for instance, the lower left corner, I could say that uh, reminds me specific case I have in mind, but uh, mm -hmm. are there many like this or are these, are there the majority <coughs> of studies on that? So I would say that pen is like this kind of structure here is also yeah. another kind of, this, there's a clearly lopsidedness here. You can see here, it's here also. Um, so, and, and this, every time you see an offset bar galaxy, mm -hmm. you will see that there is a correlation with the lopsidedness. Mm -hmm. So you have a offset bar at one hand, like you can like you know, measure the offset from this galaxy and you measure the A1, the A1 which is the lopsided component. They seem to correlate. And as I showed like examples of that, most of them is like that. So, um, and uh, the, 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 the separation between the disk and the dark matter halo is like has been used previously also to, to uh, create lopsidedness in the, in the, in the, in the disk. So this, this has been there, but um, we just wanted to make it more dynamic so that, I don't know, so. <clears throat> yeah, regarding the realisticness, I'm not, I don't think I cannot, I cannot comment on that because I did it only for experiment purpose. So, yeah, so I don't sure. know, well, it's you, you take it for fun, so I feel. Yeah, yeah. No, it's an interesting point because if it uh, writes down, so to say on the, gas distribution of the galaxy, etc. one can uh, look uh, how these structures appear or not in the sky and conclude uh, about uh, uh, the amount of the possible offset, etc., etc. Okay, it's very nice. So is there anyone else who wants to ask something from the 
uh, uh, people that are, I don't see any uh, hand raised. If, if someone else, please, uh, I'm checking the here, but I just uh, speak up if one wants to ask something, please, let's, let's do it. Okay, Preben, Preben, please go ahead. Yeah, I don't know if you can hear me. Yeah, yeah, very well. Okay, good. Uh, thank you for an interesting talk. Uh, just one totally different uh, point concerning the arrangement. It is to the arrangers. You say that it is UTC plus two hours, I believe it's three hours, which makes it a little confusing. But in any case, uh, 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 you yeah, it's, were looking. Uh, unfortunately, it's not a uh, whole hours in India. It's something that we didn't know. It's uh, <laughs> yeah. In any case, yeah. Uh, the the point concerning the the talk, I had two questions. You were looking into models. Uh, with different bulge parameters and looking on the ability to uh, for the creation of bars. Uh, mm -hmm. It had been quoted before that uh, also the pattern speed is related to the bulge properties. Uh, have you seen the same thing? Ah, so We have for all the galaxies, we have the pattern speed. I do Obviously, have. Yes. See, yeah, for all the models that has been here, for all of them, we have measurement of the pattern speed. And uh, I, I just missed the plot here, which is I did not. So, in, in the cases where the pattern speed, um, for example, once. Uh, so in the in the cases with the compact bulge, like not very the compact bulge, which is like mean here. Um, so they didn't have bar, but the uh, I do not know which property of the pattern speed because the pattern speed also changes, right? Yes. So do you? But the bulge property don't change. But the pattern speed do change. So which pattern speed would you? Yeah, the bar pattern speed, yes, sir. Correct, correct. So the, the bar pattern speed, I said it, it does change in the simulation because of the angular momentum flow. Yes, of... I was just interesting if it, in, in, uh, to what degree, but you, you didn't show exactly the relations. OK. No, I don't think I have. Um, I have looked at that, particularly from the point of view of the of the bulge extent, of the pattern speed. To some extent, it relates to obviously change in the in the length of the bar because the the co-rotation change and and therefore there's interactions. So. Yes. Okay. Good. Uh, the other question is is more related to observations. Now uh, the the problem is often to understand how old bars are. And there have been a number of observational attempts to, uh, to age, to, to put an age on the bar observed right. in different systems. And that is arguable to what extent that is possible. Now, one other argument is that uh, when a bar forms, there is a flow because of the shock in the gas a flow of material into the central regions where a central stellar disk will be formed. That supposedly can be aged or the age of that can be estimated because it, uh, it forms stars. Mm -hmm. uh, have you seen the same formation of a, a stellar uh, central disk in your simulations or you don't include gas? No, these simulations don't have gas. Oh, okay. So that's the that's the missing part. So, uh, yeah, no, no, no. So, so it's it's only like collisionless simulation. Okay. okay. Uh, it's only collisionless particles, but Gallimard does have. So, uh, to that, I think there should be a uh, the interesting thing is that is it possible to actually probe the age 
of the um, stellar population which actually make the bar uh, the, there's i think this is very difficult there have been arguments yeah. <laughs> you you can read papers of uh, gatachi and and uh, people associated to the moose project in eso etc mm -hmm. uh, personally i'm not totally convinced on that is a trivial matter but right. exactly the formation of the of a, a young or of a stellar disk uh, created by the ga gas which only would accumulate in the central regions when the bar is formed seem mm -hmm. to be an interesting option yeah, that is that is true. Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah, thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you. So related to, to Preben's question about the age of the bar, and uh, although that uh, we have the concern about how realistic is for uh, the initial setup from a homogeneously populated disk, there is a, a subset in the parameter space. Uh, that uh, you can uh, have uh, a growing grand design spiral, then later the bar comes in. So this uh, you, can, you can find in some simulations. And then you have the, the bar appearing, let's say, two, three year, uh, year, years later than the beginning of the simulation. It's also something that it is very interesting to, to be studied, to my opinion. Uh, any, any other questions? Uh, I don't see then if there are no other questions, let me and since uh, Reverend and Karnak and me and some other people here in the audience are, let me remind you that we have, uh, uh, we will have uh, a one day workshop in October, on the 14th of October, here in Athens. Uh, there we will have uh, much more time to discuss all these uh, issues about bars and spirals, etc. And uh, yeah, okay. So for the time being, let's thank Saha again, at Kanak Saha again. And uh, okay, we'll be in touch. Sure. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.